Public Record Office Victoria holds a large collection of government records about notorious bush ranger Ned Kelly. Among them is a poster advertising the film The Story of the Kelly Gang, which first screened in Australian cinemas in December 1906. The film aroused controversy and was banned in Victoria because it was believed to be too sympathetic to the Kelly Gang. The poster was originally part of a file containing documents concerning Ned Kelly written by Victoria Police to the Chief Secretary of the Victorian Government. In recognition of the poster's special significance, it received conservation treatment by Nick Selenich, a paper conservator with the Centre for Cultural Materials Conservation at the University of Melbourne. As a conservator that works with Public Record Office Victoria, this item was brought to me by an archivist. Um, it was found in the archive, but the provenance, the um, history of the object was, was a mystery. The poster was brought to me, um, and it, it was interesting because it had already been conserved in a certain way. It had been lined onto a sheet of paper. Uh, it was fairly obvious that the lining wasn't particularly appropriate. The sheet of paper was far too thick and it was far too white, it wasn't, it wasn't a very good colour match. And we weren't even sure that it was an archival paper. It looked, had the feel and look of a blotting paper. Uh, part of the problem with the colour and the weight of the object was, was that this uh, made the tears and the losses that had happened to the original poster far, far more obvious than they needed to be. So it was decided to take off uh, the original lining and reline the poster. Uh, the first step in that process was to take off the lining, um, which is normally done by soaking the object in uh, something to dissolve the adhesive. Uh, often with linings, the adhesive is water soluble, and this was no different. Uh, it was soon found to be maybe a starch paste or something like that, so we could. Uh, soak the object in uh, deionized water to, uh, release, to release the lining in the poster. Uh, of course, that, that's a problem if the inks that are used are water-soluble, but um, we found the printing inks weren't water-soluble, so it wasn't a problem. Once the original lining was, was taken off uh, and the adhesive was dissolved, um, the uh, poster was uh, laid onto mylar. Uh, it, it was a very careful process, of course, because the sheet is so thin and vulnerable, uh, and particularly when it's wet, it's thin and vulnerable. Um, but having the uh, sheet wet and on a uh, sheet of mylar gave me the opportunity to reline a lot of the, the cracks and tears that occurred on, on the original poster. So once I'd relined and tried to join the poster back together as much as I could. Uh, I put the uh, new sheet of Japanese tissue onto the back, um, again using starch paste. Uh, it's important to say at this point that all of the um, processes I used are reversible. Uh, starch paste can easily be reversed. And this is a um, principle of conservation in that at any point, anything you do to an object can be uh, easily removed and it can be returned to its original state. Uh, once the, uh, the new lining was, um, was placed onto the, the reverse of the poster, um, it was placed onto what is known as a carry-barry board, uh, these uh, uh, Japanese drying boards. A lot of the conservation treatments come from Japan, who, um, and they're really the, the masters of paper conservation, of, 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 of uh, knowledge of paper, really, of anything to do with papers. Uh, so the, the, the sheet was placed onto the carry barry board and left to dry. Uh, the reason why we do this is so that it dries completely flat. Uh, if you just leave a sheet of paper to dry um, under its own strength, it will, it will cockle and you'll get, uh, get wave, waves in it. Um, but on the carry barry board, it dries flat.